Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Thank you for your support on Patreon, WrestleTalk's personal ring announcer, Rodrigo Benitez. The Velveteen Dream is injured. Roderick Strong is going to die next week in an amazing triple threat match, but he's still going to die. And Damian Priest topples Pete Dunne. I'm El Fagador Laurie Blake. Click the thumbs up, leave a comment and give us a subscribe. Luke's going to be reviewing Dynamite in a bit. But first, I'm here to give you the rundown of NXT for October the 16th. The show opens with Daddy Champa coming home in a match against Angel Garza and his interchangeable trousers. And it really was actually about between Tommaso and Garza and his pants. Because after some back and forth, including Champa absolutely trashing Angel at ringside, Garza finally gives the ladies and NXT superfan Kyle what they want and sheds the old legs. But this gives Tomasa the window to fire back, wrecking Garza in the corner with running knees. He then grabs the pants and gives them the same treatment, even miming the fairy tale ending before using them to distract Angel and hit the draping DDT for the win. Good little match. No time to celebrate though as Undisputed Era arrive and surround the ring before Kyle O'Reilly hands over a USB drive to Maro at ringside saying, you might want to see this. Just just airdrop it, mate. It's so much quicker. What, WhatsApp it. Just anything. The production crew then managed to sit through all the thousand pictures of Roddy's boudoir shoot with the North American title and find a video of the UE backstage where they've left the Velveteen Dream bruised and beaten on a slab. We then jump into a contest between Omi Lorcan and Danny Burch against Imperium's Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner. This was a great match and a much better showing for Imperium than their first one for NXT. It all ends after a blind tag on Imperium's side allows them to hit a spine buster penalty kick combo and follow up with a European bomb for the 1-2-3. This was great stuff. Io Shirai took on Caden Carter next, and Beth Phoenix described Io as a modern mercenary hellbent on achieving her egocentric destiny. Now that is a heck of a Tinder profile. She also lives, loves, and laughs. This was really just a quick little match with both women showing off a bit of high-flying skills and a few sloppy moments that held it back from greatness. Shirai, thankfully and rightfully, picks up the W with a brutal Everest German suplex and her moonsault for grabbing a microphone and saying that she wants Baszler. But Ripley's music hits and she strides into the ring, snatching the mic as she goes. She says that Bianca called her out and next week she's going to put her in her place. And if Shirai even spits her name out of her mouth again, she will have no no problem shutting her up too. This didn't really come off half as cool or aggressive as Rhea hoped, but did lead to a stare down that had the crowd chanting, fight, 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 before Io walks off ranting in Japanese. That's a hot little angle, but we didn't see the fight that we wanted to see. Kathy Kelly then grabs Regal for a quick chat, and he says that Velveteen Dream is injured and won't be able to challenge for the North American Championship next week, but Roddy will still have to defend the title against the winner of Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. That match came next and was a slower affair than their recent clashes, but still featured some of the crazy athleticism the two are known for, like a big poison rana from Lee, a triple deadlift suplex, and an earth shattering taking splash onto Dijak's injured arm. Really though, I wish this had gone longer and reached what would have been a crazy final stretch, but Strong interferes, causing the double DQ. But, but, Regal is on the balcony, fricking fuming like Randy Datsun has just written an article about him, and says that that match next week will now be Roddy versus Lee versus Dijak. That is great booking. But again, ruin the match this week. Matt Riddle then had a lovely little match with Bronson Reed where the King of Bros showed off his strength and tossed the big man around like it was absolutely nothing. This was an important display of dominance from Riddle who needed a win after losing to Cole on NXT's two hour USA debut, the one that came about two weeks into their run on USA where they were doing it with a split. It was quite, it's, it was the big debut, the, the bigger one. We then got a Bianca Belair promo package that showed us how hair physics actually work. No thanks to you 2K20! We get an update on Kushida who will be out injured for a month with a fractured wrist. Tegan Knox then returned to NXT action after that, taking on Tainara, the judoka whose win record is a Jahoka. And it, it wasn't exactly rectified here. There was a little show of spirit from Tainara, but that was quickly cut off by Tegan, who nailed her with a diving crossbody and the shiniest wizard, essentially casting sleep on her for three seconds. Kathy Kelly then attempts to start a ringside interview with Knox and is interrupted by Dakota Kai, who is interrupted by Shayna Baszler and the Lady Centaurs. Baszler says that Knox is running out of limbs to rehab, great line. And if she wants to know what it's like to take her on, why doesn't she just ask Dakota? Ooh, 
Oh, you bitch. Now, I was definitely expecting a run-in from Rhea or Bianca or Io here to further that whole feud. So it's weird, with all of that going on, to have Baszler go back to bullying lower tier members of the women's locker room. We then got a video package of Finn Balor who talked in riddles, really, about crossroads and paths and choosing the one to walk and all of that stuff. Like he was, it was like he was Bob Dylan crossed with Blazing Squad, but the long and the short of it is that basically he's going to be back next week and possibly in the Demon. The penultimate match saw a fired up Boa try to get a modicum of revenge on Killian Dane after the random act of violence last week where he dumped him onto the announce table. But after a brief little spurt at the start, Dane lands the divide and then begins to slowly subtract functioning organs from Boa's abdomen, landing three big Vader bombs and an abdominal stretch forcing him to tap out. Dane is then weirdly spotted lurking as Pete Dunn makes his entrance, but makes that rookie mistake of directly pointing at him. You know, you've got to keep your fingers away from Pete Dunn and farm animals. They all, they all have your fingers, they'll have the ends off them. Dunn grabs them, snaps them, and doesn't really care, though, strutting down to the ring to take on Damian Priest. And this was finally the match I've been after from Priest. Now I see why they're clearly so hot on him backstage, because this match was fire emoji, 100 emoji, eggplant emoji, water droplet emoji that we're using to suggest is gin. It had everything. Great back and forth, close calls, near falls, counter upon counter, and it worked the crowd into an absolute frenzy by the end of it. Especially after the two lock up in the corner with the ref stuck between them. And as she squeezes her way out, Priest goes low, giving him the chance to hit the reckoning and put Dunn away, keeping his winning streak alive. This got the crowd pissed. But after weeks of sending people home happy, this was quite a refreshing finish to an NXT episode, and it instantly elevates Priest to hated heel. Now it's almost time for AEW, so click the I above my head to give your rating of this week's NXT, where you can choose from an EST NXT, undisputedly good, the finest. Two out of five live and Cameron Grimes' hat. For me, this week's NXT had one standout match, some exciting showings from favoured stars, but also some funky angles that didn't quite have their intended gravitas, all sort of stalled for time until the proper match started next week. So while super worth watching, especially for Priest vs. Dunn, this NXT gets a high finest from me. Now over to Luke for AEW. SCU and Lucha Brothers advance in the tag title tournament. Luchasaurus has picked up an injury. And what are the rules? I am Luke Owen. Vote in the poll above my head to let me know which show you preferred out of AEW and NXT this week as I review the 16th of October edition of AEW Dynamite. The show was supposed to kick off with Christopher Daniels and Frankie Gazarian of SCU taking on best friends in the tag title tournament. But Daniels and Kaz were attacked by the Lucha Brothers before the match with Pentagon Jr. laying out the fallen angel with the Penta driver on the ramp. Scorpio Sky ran down to make the save and took Daniels' place in the tag match. But with Kaz's back hurting from the attack, best friends were able to dominate the match early on before the action broke down into great sequence and near fall after great sequence and near fall. Sadly, the finish wasn't quite so smooth and Sky mistimed his part of SCU's double team move to pick up the win. Sky didn't look too pleased with himself after the match, but the commentary cleverly covered for this by saying he was disappointed because he wanted Daniels and Kaz to be the team in the tournament. Santana and Ortiz of Inner Circle quickly dispatched of two jobbers, which made the former LAX look really good, and then challenged the Young Bucks to a match at full gear via a Chris Jericho video on the big screen. Speaking of full gear, and we got a promo video to hype Cody Rhodes ahead of his AEW World Championship match against Chris Jericho at that pay-per-view. This was fantastic build to the match, and really built upon the character of Cody, with sit-down interviews from his wife wife Brandy, his mother, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, MJF, and Diamond Dallas Page. And each person had something unique to say about Rhodes, and it established all of his motivations heading into the match. This gets a huge thumbs up from me, and I hope AEW do this type of package more often for more of their talent. After picking up a couple of tag wins recently, Dr. Britt Baker took on Riho for the AEW Women's Championship in a match that was also really good. It didn't get off to the best of starts, but both women are so good that the crowd were popping for the near falls by the end. And I totally bought into a title switch happening when Baker was so close to locking in the lockjaw before Rio rolled her up for the win. AEW's women's division isn't as strong 
strong as WWE's or NXT or even Impact Wrestling's, but they are putting on decent matches that are given time to get over. What I'm saying is there's strong foundations here to build a great division. It was reported before the show by PW Insider that sadly Luchasaurus would not be cleared for the tag title tournament match against the Lucha Brothers and would instead be replaced by Jurassic Express's third teammate Marco Stunt, seemingly just to annoy Jim Cornette and his Twitter followers. According to Mike Johnson of PW Insider, Luchasaurus suffered a hamstring injury and the decision was made by AEW to not put him out on TV and risk further injury. And this was really fun, brilliantly utilizing stunt strength as well as showing off the incredible athleticism of the Lucha Brothers and Jungle Boy. But Luchasaurus's missing presence was felt on the match. Penta took out Jungle Boy with a Canadian destroyer and Lucha Brothers totally murderized Marco Stunt with a foot stomp package pile driver for the win. Lucha Brothers will take on Private Party next week while SCU face Dark Order in the Tag Team Tournament semi-finals. Up next was the incredibly tantalizing match of Kenny Omega teaming with Hangman Page to take on the Bastard Pack and Gian Moxley. This was awesome from the start, got better, and ended fantastically. Look, if you didn't catch AEW this week, go out of your way to see this match. It was big spot after big spot, with all four men looking amazing to thunderous this is awesome chance from the packed Philly crowd. The action broke down somewhat after Mox and Omega went nose to nose before getting out of the ring to get their barbed wire bat and broom. And this upset Pack no end. So upset was Pack at Moxley that Mox took the knock and gave the bastard the paradigm shift, allowing Omega and Paige to nail Pack with a V-trigger, buckshot, and dead eye for the win. This was fabulous professional wrestling. Actually, how would you describe the match director Kevin Smith? It was dazzling. It was also announced that Britt Baker would be in action in her hometown next week, Young Bucks will have a match along with those tag tournament semi-finals, and a mega matchup of John Moxley vs Pac. Now that should be dazzling. And the main event of the show was Chris Jericho defending his AEW World Championship against Darby Allin, who earned the shot by beating Jimmy Havoc last week. This was billed as a Philly street fight, but the commentators made it clear at the start of the match that rope breaks would still be in effect. Sadly, the live crowd did not hear that commentary because they're in the building and not watching at home. And so, when Allen got out of the walls of Jericho twice and broke up a pin with a rope break, the crowd booed and chanted, it's a street fight. Look, credit to AEW for trying to explain why there are rope breaks in a street fight, but why are there rope breaks in a street fight? Really, this was done to set up Jericho taping Allen's hands behind his back, so Darby Allen could show off how amazing he is by making a no-handed comeback, including dives and a whisper in the wind off the top rope. But the crowd were killed by the rope breaks in a street fight and were less into the comeback than they should have been. And in the end, Jack Hager appeared from nowhere to push Allen off the top rope into a wall's of Jericho for the win. It was a good final third, tainted slightly by the odd match booking. So what did you think of the show? Let me know in the poll above my head where you can choose from all elite AEW some middle of the road, her C2 out of five, and what the buck? Aside from my quibbles about the main event, this was another great episode of AEW Dynamite. The in-ring action was always hot, the promo video for Cody was great, we got some killer matches announced for next week and full gear next month, and that Omega Page Pack Moxley tag match was incredible. But due to the main event shenanigans, I can't say it was perfect. This week's AEW Dynamite is AEW-some. What was the real reason Eric Bischoff was fired from WWE? Click the Video on screen right now to find out and watch Laurie Blake and housemate Simon over on Screen Stalker Live right now. I've been Luke Owen, and that was wrestling.